Today is lesson in 7.3b, writing the partial fraction decomposition of fractions. Now uh, you'll see really quick why this is related to what we've been doing in 7.3 with system of equations. So let's get started. Partial fraction decomposition is to um, rewrite this fraction as pieces of its original, like A over one part of its denominator plus B over B over the other part of its denominator. Right? And to know what it breaks into, we have to be able to factor this quadrilateral. So factoring 2x squared plus x minus 1, we multiply and get minus 2. So numbers that multiply to equal minus 2 add equal 1, giving us 2 and minus 1. And doing slide divide bottom up, bringing that divide by 2 back into this fold, we get x plus 1 is one factor, and then x minus half, which we'll rewrite as 2x minus 1. Those two multiply to equal that piece. So we're going to have a, some number over x plus 1, and b, another number over 2x minus 1. So these two fractions add to equal what we have here, right? Negative x plus 5 over 2x squared plus x minus 1. So in order to solve for what a and b are, we have to go through the process that we would adding them, right? If I wanted to add these together, we need a common denominator. So for this whole equation on both sides, we're going to multiply by the least common denominator, which is that piece over there, which I'll just write as x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Now, most people can understand that if we kind of distribute this to each piece, right, what's going to be left over. However, to emphasize how that's going to work, we're going to do it one piece at a time. So, A gets multiplied by x plus 1, 2x minus 1, over x plus 1, and the x plus 1 is going to cancel. So, we're only going to get A times 2x minus 1. And B is going to have a similar situation. We've got x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 all over 2x minus 1. So in this case, the 2x minus 1 cancels, and it only is really multiplied by the x plus 1. Lastly, our original piece that I'm putting over here now, negative x plus 5 over, we already factored this piece to be x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, 2x minus 1. And clearly, the whole thing is going to cancel. We're just left with the numerator. So now we need to clean up what we have left, kind of underlining. We have this piece plus this piece equals this piece. Okay? So a is going to distribute. a times 2x is 2ax minus, uh, minus 1. So a times minus 1 is minus a. Next piece plus b times x plus b times 1 gives us plus bx plus b equals minus x plus 5. And here is where the equation breaks into a system of equations. Okay. Might not look like it yet, but underline the pieces that have x in it. To ax plus bx must equal minus x. Right? So just bring that out. 2ax plus bx equals minus x, or more specifically, minus 1x. We can take the x's out of this equation and call it 2a plus b equals minus 1. Next up, we need to do the same process with what's left over. We've got minus a plus b equals plus 5. Because the numbers without x need to add to equal that. So rewrite that over here. And now we have a little system there. 2a plus b is minus 1. Negative a plus b is 5. And we need to solve for a and b. So quick solve, I would say just eliminate. So we're going to multiply this bottom one by 2 and add them together. So negative 2a plus 2b equals 10. Now adding these together, 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 plus 2 is 3b equals 10 uh, minus 1 is 9. Divide by 3, I get b equals 3. Plugging that back into pick, pick your equation, I'm going to go to the bottom one. 
negative a plus b being 3 is 5, minus 3 from both sides. Negative a is 2, so a is minus 2. So my answer now, going back up to the top real quick, a was over x plus 1, so now instead of a over x plus 1, I'm going to write it as negative 2 over x plus 1 plus, and instead of b over 2x minus 1, I now have 3 over 2x minus 1. And if you check this out and added these together, you would get our original, what we started with, of uh, negative x plus 5 over 2x squared plus x minus 1. So that there is the answer to our partial fraction decomposition. Now, as with most mathematical things, there are situations that are not as straightforward as that. So we'll run into a couple in the process. But starting off, this is another one that is more straightforward. What two numbers multiply to equal 3 add equal 4? I get 1 and 3. There's only 1x squared. So this simply becomes x plus 1, x plus 3. They're my factors of my denominator. Put some letter on top of one, another letter on top of the other. And a little question most people have. Well, how do you know it's a over x plus 1 and b over x plus 3? The answer is it doesn't matter. If someone else started and wrote it this way, your system would be a flip of what my system would be, where the b value I find would end up being your a value because it's whatever is over it. And same thing, the a value I find would be your b value, right? Because you're still finding the same two fractions. So if you want to test that out on this one with your own math, that is fine. But um, I've verified it before because I've done these both ways. And now we need to multiply by the least common denominator, x plus 1, x plus 3. Now normally here's how I do it, uh, right? So I know I'm going to have x minus 2 left over. And if I have to do it underneath or above, I just kind of do it this way and realize x plus 1 is going to cancel, and I'm going to get a times x plus 3. When I do the same thing, I might write it small above or below, realize my x plus 3 is going to cancel with the b, and we'll get b, x plus 1, and then I'm going to distribute. All right? I don't necessarily need to show that it's going to multiply each piece. If it helps you out to do it how I did on the last one, where you just kind of show it each piece and cancel, then do whatever works best for you. Uh, to distributing, a times x plus 3 times a plus b times x plus b again. And again, this equals x minus 2. So we need 1x equals ax plus bx. And that was our x equation. Our other equation is negative 2 equals 3a plus b. And again, it looks a little goofy because we're going backwards. However, this one is a little more direct in the solving because both of them have 1b. So we can just take one equation and subtract the other. Right? So we can just kind of do it like this. 1 minus a negative 2 is going to be 3. a minus 3a is negative 2a. b minus b is 0b. And so I get 3 is minus 2a. And we're going to get the fraction of a is minus 3 half. Plugging it back into the top equation, 1 equals minus 3 half plus what number? Plus 3 halves to both sides. And 1 is already 2 halves, so 2 half plus 3 half gives me 5 half equals b. And my answer is negative 3 half over whatever my first fraction was plus 5 halves over the second one. And again, it was x plus 1 was the denominator of the first piece, and x plus 3 was the denominator of the second. So if you tried the other way and got 5 half for a and negative 3 half for b, but they're still right the same idea because with addition, order doesn't matter. Right? Negative 3 half plus 5 half equals 5 half plus negative 3 half, assuming we're over the same denominator. Most of these will work out better than that in terms of the fractions, but that's the process. Now, how does it get to three-dimensional systems? Sorry, three uh, variable systems, there's a word. And, well, we're going to have denominators of third powers. Now, one thing I want you to notice so far is our numerator has always been one less power than the denominator, right? Same thing here, 
x is compared to x squared, and again, negative x compared to 2x squared. We will get to somewhere this is not the same, right? That's another one of those math issues we can run into. However, the factoring is still pretty straightforward, right? So we have each piece has an x, so take one out. I'm left with x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the factors of this are what numbers multiply to equal 1 and equal 2? It's 1 times 1. Now this is where a odd situation happens because our factors are x and x plus 1 squared. So get that written down and then a mini break to show you how it works with numbers for a second. So let's say um, our factor is something over 12 for a moment because what we're really doing is we're breaking down into what type of factor this can be, 2 times 6 and then 6 is 2 times 3. So it would be 2 squared times 3, right? Now, why isn't this split into just half and just thirds? Because there's more ways to make 12, right? We can make 12 from also having 4, right? So we have to deal with that. And again, that would give us A, B, and C. This is an example of breaking apart, let's say, whatever, 17, 12, right? There's a lot of different answers there because it's real numbers. But notice... Because I have 2 and 4, right, it is possible to have 3 fourths where, yes, you know, a piece could be in the half, but we would also have a leftover piece that's in the fourth that really couldn't easily be in the half, right? Uh, so because of that numerical issue, right, where we're going to have factors that kind of go into another factor, the same thing's going to happen here where our pieces are going to be, one's going to have x, one's going to have x plus 1, but we also need to understand that we need x plus 1 squared. Because of this, our canceling is going to be a little different, but things will still work out in the end. Also, recognize that x plus 1 squared is right here, so when we need to multiply by that, we kind of already have it. And again, I just generally go alphabetical A, B, C here. The solving process is the same. Everything is going to get multiplied by x times x plus 1 squared, our common denominator, LCD, across the board both sides. So the first part, if I'm multiplying this by x times x plus 1 squared, the x's cancel, and I get a times x plus 1 squared, which I just said was this piece. So that might save us a little bit of foiling out after we already kind of went the other way, divided it out. Next part, x times x plus 1 squared with the b over x plus 1. Now, one of these cancels, but not both, right? At one x plus 1 cancel, but not both. So I'm just going to cancel out that piece. And we're going to have b times x times x plus 1. Or I'm just going to multiply this and give you x squared plus x times b. Actually, we can, we can show that in one extra step. I'm not afraid of a little bit of math steps here, so... And then the last one, c over x plus 1 squared, right, x times x plus 1 squared. Smart board now, not being so smart on the side of the board. But these will cancel and we'll have c times x. Now, some people are like, ugh, I already see three variables, this is going to be horrible. However, in my opinion, all the ones that I've done of this, the more variables you get for the system, generally the easier your system is. It sounds backwards, but you'll see it in a little bit. Distributing ax squared plus 2ax plus a, right, each thing gets an a, plus bx squared plus bx, plus cx. Equals, and now I'm bringing the numerator down, 5x squared plus 20x plus 6. And this is where that last statement I made will make sense. So group up everything that has the x squared. ax squared, bx squared, that's it and 5x squared. So our x squared equation is a plus this b equals 5. So I can color code because I can. Next one, how many x? 2ax plus bx plus cx. 2a plus b plus c equals 20. That's my x equation. Last equation, what's left? 
I've got A equals 6. Well, that's neat. They gave me a variable. A is 6. Now we need to solve. And again, this is technically C for constant, where we didn't have X. Well, if A is 6, plugging it up here, 6 plus B is 5. B is negative 1. And then the last one, 2A, which is 12, plus a negative 1, which we're down to 11, plus C is 20. And so minus 11 for both sides, C is 9. So instead of saying my answer is, again, 6, negative 1, 9, I need to remember that the first part was over X, the second part was over X minus 1, and the third part was over X minus 1 squared. So 6 over X plus a negative 1 over X minus 1 plus a 9 over X minus 1 squared is our partial fraction decomposition. Moving on, right? That's the math part. Another one. X, 2x cubed plus 3x plus 1. Now, I pointed out the pattern last time, and you'll notice we have an issue here. Right? We can work till we run into the issue, but notice these match. Which means um, it's not going to be capable of partial fraction decomposition yet. We need to do some division, right? These generally don't match. Again, looking back at the last three, x squared over x cubed, x over x squared, right? So our denominator has generally been small, uh, larger than the numerator. Now they're the same. So when they're the same, we need to long divide first. And then we're going to partial fraction decomposition the remainder. So we've got 2x cubed minus 3x uh, or more accurately, plus 0x squared minus 3x plus 1, all divided by x cubed plus x squared. This is pretty quick because we're really saying how many x cubed are in 2x cubed. The x cubes drop off. We have 2. And now when we multiply 2x cubed, 2x squared, flip our signs, we're left with the remainder of negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. all over that original remainder, or divisor, pardon me, x cubed plus x squared. And now this is what we're partial fraction decompositioning. Okay. So breaking down the x cubed plus x squared, they both have x squared, and we're left with x plus 1. And so now we have a over x, right? b over x squared, and c over x plus 1. And again, if you wanted to start with x plus 1, make a over uh, b over, like a over x plus 1, b over x, c over x squared. Again, that order doesn't matter, right? Adding is commutative, so order doesn't matter. So, now, multiplying by x squared, x plus 1. Under each piece. Cancel out what's common. So we're going to have a x squared plus x. Do one x cancel. And then here the whole x squared cancels, so b times x plus 1. And lastly, the x plus 1 cancels, which does cx squared. And so multiplying it out, ax squared plus ax plus bx plus b plus cx squared. And now bringing that denominator down equals negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now, just a quick note. If you did not long divide and you got to this step, this is where you would realize you needed long division. Because at this point, we didn't have any x cubed and we had an x cubed piece. And that's when you realize, oh, uh, something needed to come out first. Okay. Um, now, it is possible for something to add to equal 0, but we can't have nothing add to equal 2, right? We couldn't have, we have 0 pieces of x cubed add to equal 2x cubed, right? That doesn't work. But it is possible if we have ax squared plus bx squared equals 0x squared, right? That just means they're going to be opposites, okay? So just a little note on what, what's possible and makes sense and what's not possible slash doesn't make sense. Okay. 
separating them out, x squared pieces. I've got a plus c for my x squared equals minus 2. And again, that was my x squared equation. Next up, ax plus bx equals minus 3x. What's left? b equals 1. And like I said, these systems are a little bit easier. So b equals 1, right, circling that. a plus 1 is minus 3, so a is minus 4. And minus 4 plus a plus c equals minus 2, plus 4 to both sides, c is 2. So I've got minus 4 over uh, x plus 1 over x squared plus a negative uh, 2, sorry, over x plus 1. And then don't forget, we got 2 when we did our long division. So you need to make that 2 appear in your answer. It can't just be all of a sudden the 2 disappears. So at the end, 2 plus partial fraction decomposition equals what they started us with at the beginning. And again, that's a kind of a tough one. So if you have questions, do ask. And last one, one more odd situation. What else can happen here, right? Take out an x, we have x squared plus 1. Now this is where we can have a piece with two variables over the top, right? Because, yet we could have a number of x over x, but they would just cancel, right? But could we have a number of x over x squared plus 1 and it not cancel, right? Because it's x squared plus 1, we could have a number of x and a number of non uh constant over x squared plus 1 that wouldn't simplify out. So that's how this question is going to work. This one is some number over the x plus, we're going to call it bx plus c, kind of like an mx plus b look, over the x squared plus 1 piece. And now solving the fraction decomposition. Right, the x is cancel over here, so we got x squared plus 1. Second part, the x squared plus 1 cancels, so we're left with the x. And this time it's bx squared plus cx. And then this equals 2x plus 1. Now, one of the situations I just mentioned last slide happened here. So, color code, ax squared plus bx squared equals missing. Yeah. ax squared plus bx squared equals 0. That's our x squared equation. That means A and B are going to be opposite, right? A equals minus B. Next step. A. Uh, no matter what I start with A. Sorry, I know I do my X's. CX equals 2X. That's a little quick. And last one. Color code A equals 1. So they're giving us A. They're giving us C. We didn't get solve for one piece. 1 plus B is 0. So B is minus 1. And now we're ready to plug it in. 1 over x plus negative 1 times x plus 2 over my x squared plus 1. And there's my solution. That wraps up this lesson. Shoot me an email if you have any questions.